What is up guys, it's Tony here, and today we are doing, as you can see here, a tutorial on how to build a gaming computer. It's a mid-range PC, and it's relatively fast for what you pay for. Um, if you look at you know all the parts, you can see individually we have a pretty decent mid-range uh, GPU, pretty decent mid-range CPU, really nice memory, this is 21, 33 megahertz rip jaw memory. Um, pretty nice case here. This is actually one of my favorite cases. Um, big Cooler Master fan, and this is the High Airflow 922 Mid Tower. And all around, I think it's a pretty good build to uh, show you guys the basics of putting together a computer. So we're going to go ahead and start off by opening some of these parts and starting off with step one. So the first step, as any uh, PC builder knows, is to get the motherboard out of its box. So usually these, these motherboards open like this. It's kind of like a pizza box type of opening. Uh, you got some manuals in here. You are gonna need these. So keep your manuals handy. Uh, drivers, which most of these things keep them handy, but you probably won't want to use them because they're usually out of date. Here's your back plate. And it comes with two SATA cables. So that could be used for a CD drive and it could be used for a hard drive or two hard drives or two CD drives, whatever your preference is. Now here's the motherboard. It's going to be wrapped in this plastic, which is meant to prevent static shock to the board. So just leave that over there. Now here's the motherboard. Now, open up the plastic very slowly. Try not to touch the board's components or circuitry. Try to hold it on the sides of it and hold it like this from the sides. This is very important because if you touch any components and you get any sweat or oil or grease or anything on these components, you can ruin your board. And place it down on top of the box. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to install is the CPU. So we're gonna open that up real quick. And here's the processor and a sticker. And you're usually gonna find a cooler, uh, basically a, a simple fan and heat sink. It's just basically a block, big metal block with a small fan on it. And there's clips, which I believe clip here and here. Now, every single CPU is, or uh, every cooler is gonna be different. And for this AMD CPU, it looks like there's two clips that clip onto the sides here. I may have to look into it and I'd recommend, even if you understand it, if you understand how it works, I recommend looking up and researching how it's done. For this socket, you simply see this arm here, you pull the arm up and then you're gonna open up your CPU. Now hold it, like I said, on the sides and face the pins, which you'll see on the bottom downward, and line up the golden triangle with the plastic triangle and put it down and it'll just slide in. Just shimmy it around a bit and it'll just fall into place. Very simple. It wouldn't fall, it usually doesn't fall into place unless you have it the right way. So don't worry, you probably have it in the right place. But the triangle should be pointing to the top left side of the board, which is up where the IO is, if that helps you. Then you're gonna pull down the arm and boom. Your CPU is in place. Now for this part of the video, I decided not to include the commentary I recorded live during the build because this part of the build of any computer is really subjective to what type of cooler you use. I recommend looking online for your specific cooler, uh, a tutorial or some sort of manual on how to install it, and basically be patient and be careful and don't force anything into place. So now we are going to install some RAM. I'd say the hardest part of doing RAM is getting it out of the case sometimes. I mean, these cases are ridiculous. So once you have the RAM out, you're going to look at these slots right here. These are the RAM dim slots. So you usually want to go for two RAM dims if you have dual channel memory of uh, the same quantity and same speed. Just get like a four by two kit or an eight by two kit. And you're going to open up these two clips and push down with a good, a good deal of force on both sides until they kind of push in, clip down. Sometimes they'll snap, sometimes they won't. If they don't snap, don't freak out. And then line up the second DIN and push that down as well. So before you start to put your motherboard in your case, you have to open it. And you want to uh, take out all of the plastic ties and things like that and the cardboard box in here. Because those usually get in the way of all your parts and also those contain very important uh, parts that you're going to need to connect your motherboard to this case. And let's look at this uh, cardboard box here. It looks like we got screws and sleds for the hard drive. Standoff manual. 
which we're gonna need. The next thing is you wanna get these wires out and take a look at what they are. So now we got the standoffs and the screws in here. So we're gonna open this up. Here are the standoffs and what looks like more screws. In fact, these are the screws for the motherboard. But if you're not sure which screws go to what, use your manual that comes with your case. I have mine off on the side. So now we are looking at the inside of the Cooler Master High Airflow case. And this is actually a step that's a little bit dreaded by people. It's putting in standoffs and making sure they all line up properly. So how I do it usually is I grab the board and I keep a mental note of where a couple of them need to go. So I noticed that one needs to go here and one needs to go there. So now I take my motherboard, put it back in a safe area, and put in those two standoffs that I needed. Now standoffs, you usually can just screw in with your thumb. Um, you can get a special type of screw driver to use for this. In fact, sometimes they include the tool. Ah, they did include the tool, if you see that. So just put the, the, uh, the adapter there, pull the standoff, find where you need to put your standoff, line it up, and then screw. Really great tool. Now, some cases don't require standoffs. That's really cool. If you find a case that doesn't require standoffs, that'll save you a lot of time. So now we got the standoffs in the case. There are six standoffs for this board. I used my method and I got them all in. Now I'd recommend real quick to you guys, don't put them in too tight because if you do, they're hard to get out and you might strip them. So the next step is to take your back plate, open it up and you're gonna take your back plate and you're gonna put it in the back of your case. Take your back plate, line it up with your motherboard to make sure it's set up right. This is how mine needs to go. And from the inside, you push out until it, uh, it snaps in. So that's in right. Make sure there's no like edges popping out that aren't put in right. Now you grab your board and then line up with your IO shield. This process can take a bit of time and concentration. So now we've got all of the standoffs lined up with the motherboard properly. Once you're done with that, you need to start screwing in the motherboard. Count out how many screws you're gonna need. I need six. So now I've got six screws. If, you, if you're not sure which screws you're supposed to be using, they're usually the ones that are with the standoffs. And if you don't have standoffs, consult your manual and you figure out which one are for the motherboard itself. And once you're ready, start screwing them in. So now all of the screws are in, and the next step is another extremely annoying step. We're going to start wiring in all of the switches for the case into the board itself. So inside of your case, you're going to find an array of cables, and these cables are going to be really small, hard to read, and sometimes they won't even have anything to read. These pin cables are usually two pins, one pin four pins, something along the lines of that. And all of these little pins go into these, well, these uh, little plugs, I should say, go into these pins down here. These pins include USB 2.0, they include all sorts of power switches and, and LED switches and things like that. So how do you figure out which one you put it into? Well, if you look very closely, there is very small writing that says, this is what this is, this is what that is. But if you don't know what JFP1 means, and you're not experienced at this, you're gonna need something to explain it to you. That's where the manual comes in. This is the manual that came with the motherboard. Pull out your manual and look for where the pins are. Okay, so JFP1 and JFP2 are front panel connectors. And it says if you go to page 18, it'll explain to you which pin is used for what. There you go, very simple. MSI's handbooks, I've had a lot of experience with them and they work very well for explaining to you how to use these pins. That JFP1 controls HDD light, or HDD LED, I should say. The reset switch controls the power LED and the power switch. JFP1 is right here. It says that for the HDD LED, which I'm holding in my hand, uh, you want the positive facing towards me and the negative facing away from me. Very simple. So I'll just connect it into the pin. And if you don't have very small hands or very good vision, uh, find someone who has that. Reset switch, positive is facing away from me and negative is facing toward me. Now, this one does not have an indicator of what positive is and what negative it is. So what that means is that you're gonna have to go by this little triangle that is sitting on here. That indicates that's the positive. Quick tip, uh, put all your wires under the back plate to allow for better wire management. Okay, so the JFP1 is complete, but now we have the audio pins. And it looks like J Audio 1 is for the front panel audio connector, which means that this goes right in 
here. So the last thing you're gonna have to plug into these pins is the speaker. And I'm gonna plug in now the SATA cable. And then you're gonna plug in your fans. There's a system fan header right here. And put that down there. And now essentially everything that needs to be plugged in from the case is plugged in. So now we're gonna take the power supply and we're gonna put it into the case. And the way you do that is very simple. You put it into the spot where it's supposed to go. You grab four screws, which usually come with it, and you screw in the power supply. There it is. The next part of this, uh, this whole building process is cable management. So the way you do that usually in most cases nowadays is you open up the side panel. And when you open that up, you'll find that there's a lot of holes usually, which allow you to pass cables through and bring them to certain points that you want them to be at. For example, this 24 pin, which powers the motherboard. I'm gonna take this modular power supply and I'm gonna send back all of these pin cables, which are used for powering the CPU, powering the graphics card, and the 24 pin, which is used for powering the motherboard. You will see I could bring this through here and plug it right in. And the 24 pin could be one of the more annoying pins from the power supply to put in. Just pay attention to the shape of the pins and where the clip is, and it's usually self-explanatory once you notice that. So now the 24 pin is in. Now notice that these pins that you took from the power supply are all gonna be different. They're gonna have different amounts of pins. Some of them may even have numbers or letters on them. And you'll notice some of them will say PCIe. Those are for your graphics card. We're not doing that yet. The one that has eight pins usually is for your CPU. Your CPU is way up here. So what you're gonna do is there's usually a hole here where you put it through and you pull this through and you plug it into the eight pin connector. Sometimes laying it down will help. There we go. And now it's in. So I've got the graphics card here. And what you gotta do with this GPU or with any GPU is you take off the plastic or rubber guard that covers the PCI pins. Do not touch those. And you're gonna need to choose where your PCI slot is that you're going to use. We're gonna use this top one. The top one usually is X16 when it is being used by itself. If you use the bottom one, it's only geared for X8 or X4, which means you're gonna get lower um, voltage, which means your GPU may not run as well as it should. And what you need to do is take your GPU and line it up. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is line it up just to see which of the two plates you're gonna be removing. And I'm gonna unscrew these. And these plates, keep in mind, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep them in case for some reason you take out your GPU because it's not working. You don't want any dust to get in through here. So hold on to the plates if possible. Put that there, and there we go. So, once you got those two plates out, you're ready to put the card in. You just line it up and you push down. And it goes in, just like that. And we're gonna need the screwdriver again. And you're gonna take those screws that you just took out and you're gonna screw the GPU in. Now, the last step for the GPU is to plug in the power cables. This one only uses one six pin because it's a mid-range GPU. So, take that six pin, turn it the right way, and plug it in. If you have eight pins, use these two extra pins. If you have multiple eight pins and you have a PSU that can handle that, plug in these spare uh, PCI cables into the modular PSU and then plug those in. So the next step is to put in the hard drive, but I already put it in. And the reason why is because this is a very simple hard drive to put in. It's, a, it's basically a screwless, toolless mount. Uh, you just snap it into there and it's in. So there's not much to it. Um, for other systems, you're gonna have to screw it in. You can follow the directions, but it's usually pretty simple. And for SSD drives, there's usually like a special type of sled that you have to hook up, which also I recommend following directions for. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the power cable this is a power SATA cable. It's kind of what it look like, looks like. It's very simple. It's just a long uh, strip and you basically just find it and plug it in and match it up with the right plug. And that comes out of your power supply. Then you're gonna need to get the data cables. These are the data SATA 3 cables. They usually come with your motherboard. It depends on what type of motherboard you bought. And on your motherboard, you're going to flip around your system and you're gonna look on your motherboard for this right here. It's right behind your GPU, and it's a series of SATA cables. Now, sometimes you'll have specialized SATA ports, which are for six gigabytes per second. 
I'm gonna use one of those. You're gonna look back at your hard drive and you're gonna take that SATA cable and you're gonna line it up with the data port, which is usually right next to the power. And now your hard drive is ready to go. So now we're taking a look at the CD drive where you usually just pop out the front panel cover. And then there's usually a mechanism that just allows you to slide the CD drive straight in with no problems. So once your CD drive is in, make sure it's all locked in properly. And the next step is to plug in the cables. You take your power cable and bring it around from the hard drive. You can do that. And plug it in just like on your hard drive. Your SATA 2 or 3 gigabytes per second. CD drives usually don't transfer a lot of data and you don't really need high speed for it. So there you go. That is the setup for the CD drive. So now that we're done putting all the parts together, we're going to be doing the first boot up. Let's do it in three, two, one. Nothing. So let me just double check. Okay, so the good thing that it's not powering up is that it's not a short. It just means something's not plugged in right, which is a good thing because it doesn't mean something's broken. I'm going to try to figure this out. I'm going to unplug it. Okay, my guess is it's something to do with the switches. Okay, that switch isn't put in all the way. It came out a little bit. So let's try it now. There we go. Boom. Now there's a tip for you guys. If anything ever goes wrong, don't freak out. Take it slow, go through the everything, make sure everything's working fine. And slowly you'll figure it out. So once you boot your system up, you're gonna wanna go ahead and look at the BIOS. The BIOS is gonna tell you all the parts that your computer can recognize, and it's gonna be where you can check to see if everything is working basically properly. But we're gonna go ahead and get a copy of Windows 7 and we'll be right back. So in your BIOS, your, uh, your, what you're going to do basically is put in your Windows 7 CD and you're going to change your boot device priority to your CD drive. When you do that, you're going to save your changes and reboot. And when you do that, it's going to boot from your CD and it's going to allow you to install Windows 7. Hey, it's working! Look at that! And once your build is done, you're going to basically go ahead and install your MSI drivers or whatever motherboard you have drivers. Um, and you're going to go online and then you're going to go ahead and install your GPU drivers, uh, the latest drivers from the AMD or NVIDIA website. And you're basically done. Uh, get yourself a nice keyboard, a monitor, and go ahead and start gaming. So that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video of my gaming computer build on how to build gaming computers, Go ahead and like and comment and subscribe for more like this in the future. That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time.